So now we're going to start having a look at PMCC and SRCC. Now both of these are measures of correlation. Um, but to start off with, we're going to have a quick recap on scatter diagrams. So scatter diagrams are used to represent relationships between two variables, one variable with respect to another factor. So for instance, two test scores. Note, if it is, if one of the variables uh, is time, then you should use a time series graph instead. So that's very important to note that neither of the two variables is time. Uh, it is usually necessary to examine data in a scatter <coughs> diagram before you can perform other calculations with the data. Data with two variables is called bivariate data, and that's very important. Bivariate data is where you have two pieces of information about the same thing, not two samples of data where you have the same sized uh, samples, but each data point relates to the same person. So here we have the scatter diagram showing some information about the marks of five students. It shows each student's mark in both maths and science. And we have a table with four more students. So what this means is that student A got 22 in maths and 30 in science. They both relate to this pupil that I've just labelled A. Pupil B got an 8 in maths and a 12 in science. This is not just a sample of maths scores and science scores. They are related to four students. Usually, you can tell that it's bivariate data because across the top, there will be something that is linking them together. For instance, A, B, C, D for the pupils. And then two categories down the side, which is data for both of them. And the data will be on different things, two variables, not the same thing before and after. That's different. Here we have maths and science. We have two different variables and we have the people that it's relating to. So on the scatter diagram, we're going to plot the information from the table. So here we already have the five data points that have already been plotted for us and we're going to add these four to it. And that's quite important that usually in the exam, they're not going to get you to plot a lot of data points because that takes a lot of time and it's not really showing much skill. So usually you'll either be given the full scatter diagram already given to you or you'll just have to add a few points on like we do here. So for this pupil that I've labelled A, they got 22 in maths. So 20, 1, 2, look in here because there's 10 squares between 0 and 10, each little square is worth 1, so 1, 2, 22, and they got 30 in science, so that's going to put their mark there. For the next person, 8 in maths and 12 in science, so that puts their mark there. 17 in maths, 24 in science, so 17, 24, that puts their mark there, and then 26 in maths, 24 in science, puts their mark there. So if you were to try and draw a line of best fit, remember that you need to do this using a pencil and a ruler. We haven't talked about this yet, but we are going to go on to how we can actually calculate the proper line of best fit and how that works. However, for now, we're just going to try and do it by eye, which means that we're trying to get about the same amount of points above and below. Maybe a little bit more that way. So roughly something that looks like that. Roughly something that looks like that. Now, it's also important to understand that the line of best fit doesn't have to pass through the origin. Usually a line of best fit passes through the mean point. So you could calculate the mean point. However, because we weren't given all the sets of data, 
it's unlikely that they'd ask you to do that because it'd take quite a while to read off all the data points and just to find the mean for the math scores and the mean for the science scores. However, I am quickly going to pause the video and do that so you can see where that point is. So all I've done is I have read off the five points and made a note of them here. Then in my calculator, I have put the data that was given to me here in the table. So you can see here 22, 8, 17, 26. I put the math scores into list one and 30, 12, 24, 24. I've put the science scores into list two. And I've also put in the new data that I've read off. So 15, 12, 22, 24, and so on. So I now have all the data points that are on the scatter diagram in my calculator. And then if we go to calc and to set, we're now looking at two var. Okay, remember that now we have two variables. The first variable we put in list one. The second variable, the Y list, what was on our Y axis, I've put into list two. And then if we go to two var, so everything so far we've put in one var. If we have a quick look in two var, we can see that we've got this X bar. So our X bar is 21.1 recurring, 21.1 to three significant figures. And if I scroll down, we also have this Y bar. So that means the mean of the Y values. So actually, our line should pass through this point. So let's have a look. 21, 26. That was actually quite a good guess for my line because it does actually pass through that mean point. I suggest not adding it onto your diagram, that's why I've done it in red so you can see it separate from the other ones, but remember that when your paper gets scanned, they can't see the difference between the colours. And also, like I said before, we are going to look at a better way to actually calculate what the regression line looks like. But that is quite a good regression line uh, as it does pass through the mean point. I've got four below, four above, and then I've got that fifth one that's almost on the line there. So then here, we're asked to describe the correlation between the marks in maths and the marks in science. So we can see here, as the marks in maths are increasing, the marks in science are increasing. And this represents a positive correlation. Now you need to be careful not to make any definitive statements. So it's not those that get a higher mark in maths get a higher mark in science, because that is making a comment about certainty. And all we can do is infer that there is a correlation between the two not that one is affecting the other. So here we've got another student has a score of 18 in science. Use our line of best fit to estimate what they would get in maths. So remember that this is only an estimate because again, we're only saying that there's a correlation between these two. So we're saying that they got 18 in science. So if we read across from 18 until we hit our line and then read down, they should hopefully get about 15 marks. And hopefully you've done this sort of thing at GCSE, as I said before. So now I'd like you to try the now you try question. Again, most of the data has been plotted. The first five results have been plotted for you. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So it's only going to be, sorry, two, three, four, five. So it's only going to be number six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 that you have to plot on there yourself. So give it a try and then continue with the video. 
Okay, so hopefully you've paused the video and you've given now you try go. As you can see here, I've uh, added on the five points that I got asked to in red here. And in my calculator, I then put all the data that was in the table. This question's much easier because the data's already given to us. And I can see that the mean point would be, if I go into 2 var, 5.35 for our mean x value and 12.48 for our mean y value. And you can just see it here, my little purple splodge. And then I've got my line of best fit that passes through it. So this time, they would probably expect us to do that. However, like I said before, again, we are going to look at the proper way that we can calculate these lines of best fit later on. So then we had to describe the relationship. So as age increases, the hours uh, of sleep decreases. And again, that's a negative correlation this time. Last time it was positive, this time it's negative. And then we had to use our scatter diagram to estimate the number of hours sleep of a three-year-old child. So if I just zoom out a bit, sorry, that was wrong one. There we go. You can see I've gone up from three until I hit my line. And then I went across. And if I just zoom back in, we can read off that that is 13.246. So 13.6 hours. So we did have to be careful this time. One of the main reasons why people go wrong on this question is because of the scaling on the axis. We've done so many graphs and quite a lot of the time, one little square is worth one or 0.1. However, in this case, because we have 10 squares between zero and two, and again on the Y axis, 10 little squares between zero and two, that means that every time we go up by one little square, that means that we're adding on 0.2, not 0.1. So you have to be very careful when you're adding your points on and when you're reading off the graph that you make sure that you understand what each little square is. And every time you do one of these questions, you need to be checking that. Again, when you're making a comment about what's going on in the graph, Make sure that you're talking about a correlation, not saying people with higher ages have less hours sleep, just saying as one goes up, the other one goes down. That means that we have a negative correlation. We are going to move on from this to have a look at PNCC and SRCC, which I will make different videos for. Thank you very much for listening.